And in this segment, I'm going to tell you why you should consider, in fact, why you should boycott any and all products right now from the country of Mexico. Not people from Mexico and nothing Mexican-American, just Mexico. I'm going to explain that to you. I've told you before that, uh, and those of you who heard me bloviate in the past, that you know that I'm a former television news director. One of the things that is very, very hard for a guy with 33 years of journalism training, like what I got, uh, is to um, is to express an opinion. That's been it's been really scary, but it's been really liberating. I don't have too many other colleagues who do that, but I ran into one by way of Facebook this past weekend. Now, there's a cat in Atlanta, a retired television news anchor for whom I have the utmost respect. His name is Wes Sargenson, and he is somebody who lived and breathed the examples of and the values of journalism the entire time I knew him and believed in in, in getting out there and telling people stories, and he was just a consummate television journalist. And on his Facebook page, I found the following shared on his status line, quote, Once again, I implore all of you, buy nothing from Mexico. Even toilets are made there. Check is basically saying check to see what you're buying to make sure it wasn't made in Mexico. Buy nothing from Mexico until the Marine who made the mistake is returned and then shut down that border. Now, here's what he's talking about. And maybe you've heard this story. Maybe you've heard enough about it to where it's in the back of your mind and you know, oh, yeah, and there's something about a Marine that's in jail in Mexico, and I'm going to tell you about it at length in this segment. So in March, a Marine veteran uh, named Sergeant Andrew Tamaresi, and I probably have mispronounced that, but Tamaresi looks like it's about how it's spelled, T-A-H-M-O-O-R-E-S-S-I. He's 25 years old. He was headed to a dinner in San Isidro on March 31st when he blew past the exit sign. And the way apparently this particular street he was on is set up, if you don't want to go to the border crossing checkpoint, then you have to exit. So he missed his exit. He missed his exit and then wound up proceeding to the, che- the border checkpoint. Turns out this guy had all of his earthly possessions in his car because he was, re- he was moving from Florida to California. And he was going to try to meet up with some friends, right? So he took a wrong turn. This guy's driving cross country. Uh, either on that day or the day before, I'm not really clear when, but he had all of his earthly possessions in his car because he was making a trip from from, from Florida to California where he's planning to move and start a new life. Well, in his possessions were three military-style weapons. Now, Mexico has a very, very strong law on the books against bringing guns into Mexico and and against having guns. Now, they only tend to enforce them on tourists, and if they catch a drug smuggler at the border, fine. If you've got a gun in Mexico and you belong to a drug cartel, that's fine. Those people can run around and shoot each other all day and into the night. But citizens caught with a gun go to jail. So do foreigners. No excuses, no questions. You go to jail, you go immediately to jail, you do not pass go, you do not collect $200, your butt is going to go in jail and rot. No bail, no nothing. You're going to jail. And that's exactly what happened. Now, he told, and I'm reading now from a report from um, CBS News. This is from a few weeks ago. This is posted on May 4th. He says, I was going to call my friends after I drove off the exit, uh, but I never got off the exit. I blew right past it. He told a newspaper in an interview from jail, I wasn't paying attention, thinking I had a way further to go. I ended up in Mexico with no way to turn around. Mexican authorities found the three guns inside the truck. He had recently driven from Florida. He was jailed. He is now in jail. He is in Tijuana's La Mesa Penitentiary without bail. Now, some of our U.S. representatives, including one of his, Representative, Republican Representative Duncan Hunter, last week wrote a letter asking Secretary of State John Kerry to secure Tamarisa's release. said that the State Department was aware of the arrest of a U.S. citizen in Mexico but does not comment on arrest of private individuals without the person's permission. They don't consider this a diplomatic issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a legal issue within Mexico and the Mexican courts, but doesn't rise to the level of diplomacy. So one of the things that some people are starting to say, 
is, especially including my friend Wes Sargenson, is that, you know what, maybe we need to make this a diplomatic issue. And maybe it's going to take some citizens to stand up and do that. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to play for you a little piece on um, a news story about this. And I believe this is from the day when he was in court. And uh, we're going to hear a little bit of a Fox News report. Fox News has been paying a lot of attention to this. As some of its critics would say, oh, of course you would. Well, yeah, of course they would. It's an American serviceman who served two tours in Afghanistan who is now riding in a Mexican jail for taking a wrong turn. So, yeah, that's something Fox News would be interested in, and I applaud them from that. Here's a clip from their story from a few days ago. Uh, the U.S. Marine now accused of crossing the Mexican border with weapons and ammo, facing four border officials in a Mexican court. They insist they followed protocol when holding Sergeant Andrew Tamarisi for eight hours without a translator or access to U.S. State Department officials. His attorney says his rights at that point were trampled. The customs agents admitted that the order to search the vehicle uh, was uh, a blank order that was signed uh, three days in advance of the facts taking place. And one of the agents admitted that with his own handwriting, he filled in Andrew's name and the information for his vehicle. William Lajones, watch that trial. Back with us live now in Southern California. Was anything resolved in this trial yesterday, William? Bill, in short, no, it wasn't. The number one takeaway that uh, Sergeant Tamborisi is not getting out of prison anytime soon. And secondly, there's no certainty that he's going to beat this charge that carries a sentence of up to 14 years. Here's video of Tamarisi arriving in uh, the federal courthouse in Tijuana yesterday. His attorney tried to do two things. Number one, lay that foundation that Mexican customs denied him his civil rights when they held him for eight hours without an attorney, a translator, or to access to the consulate. Secondly, that there are violations in that paperwork and have that evidence thrown out, such as the form used to search the vehicle was dated before he got to Mexico, Tamarisi, and secondly, that it contained a forged signature. But the government attorney says that the search was legal, the documents, while not perfect, reflect bureaucracy, not fraud, whose right could be determined by a surveillance video from the port of entry, evidence that the government claims is confidential and will not hand over. It's been requested, but it's been denied on several occasions by customs under the guise that it's uh, confidential information. No. Now, the judges said, I, I, I don't care if it is, I'm not asking. I'm ordering the video to be delivered, and we're waiting on an answer from customs. Now, that petition to the White House for Sergeant Tamarisi has 133,000 signatures, Bill. Uh, many want President Obama to get more involved, but Mexico insists this is not a diplomatic uh, or um, a political issue, but something, a legal issue that will be resolved in the Mexican courts. All right. So basically, it's not looking so good. There's no indication he might beat the rap. Uh, the Mexican government really has not been open to any uh, discussion on this. They, they continue to insist that Tamarisa's case is neither a diplomatic or political issue, saying in a statement that there is strictly a judicial issue that will be resolved by the Mexican federal courts. I don't see it that way. I think this is ridiculous. I think we have a U.S. citizen basically being held captive just exactly the way some you know we should be responding to it, the way we would we would respond to any U.S. citizen being held captive. The charges are ridiculous, and we should make it diplomatic. We the people. So how can you do that? Well, there are a couple of ways. One of them is you can sign the White House petition. Now, you may or not, may not know the White House has a service now where you can you can go online and file a petition. And the promise is uh, if you file, this, file a petition on whitehouse.gov, which is their website, then if it reaches 100,000 signatures, then uh, the president will respond in some way. So I signed my uh, name to it this morning. It had 130-odd thousand uh, re signatures on it. So in theory, that responds the, that requires and obligates the president to make some kind of response. I don't personally trust it since this is a petition process that's done by the White House, not by the people. So there are other ways to contact the White House. You can also email the White House. And there is an email form under the whitehouse.gov contact page. I will put that on my blog as well, the Bashful Bloviator blog later today. I'll put that up for you. I don't trust that one either because that's a web form. You can't just sit down on your Gmail and pound out an email to them and, and have it come into their inbox. It's an email form, which to me is easier to just 
kiss off. I recommend that you write the White House. And that number, uh, that address is the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20500. I'm going to repeat that for you, and then I'll repeat it again at the end of the program. Uh, The White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20500. So again, here's the information. Get out your pen and paper. I repeat this again at the end of the program uh, shortly before noon. It's Sergeant Andrew Tamaresi, T-A-H-M-O-O-R-E-S-S-I. And the address to write is the White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20500. Tell President Obama to do something about this American that's being held hostage in Mexico. And that is exactly what it is. This is ridiculous. And while you're at it, you see anything today that says HO in Mexico or made in Mexico on it, don't buy it. And make sure you let the clerk know why you're not until this is resolved. This is ridiculous. The last thing I'm going to say about this uh, is that there's an item out on the, this was published just a couple of days ago. There's a California lawmaker who's going to protest the visit, the, the visit of Mexico's president because of that Marine. California State Assemblyman plans to stage a protest outside the governor's mansion this week to demand that Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto, who is to be honored at a luncheon, that's tomorrow, that he ensure the release of a U.S. Marine held captive in Mexico. That's Assemblyman Don, uh, Tim Donnelly. Good on him. Let's hope others join him. 